So, welcome to the next session. We will have Anmol Krishan Sahdeva as a speaker. Um, he will talk um, about guns. I met Anmol, I think, first time at Geopison conference some years ago. Um, Anmol is very active at visiting conferences, real physical conferences back in the day. So he was also a PyCon Thailand, Malaysia and many, many more. And I think last year at, I don't even remember, Geopison or Europison. Yeah. Um, and so welcome Anmol. He's also, um, I have to mention that this year he is also one volunteer of Europison. So thank you very much for volunteering. And now I give you a talk. Start your slides, please. Thanks, Martin, for the introduction. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, I'm Anmol Sosteva. Uh, the, uh, the title for today's talk is Painting with Cans. We'll be talking about the neural style transfer and uh, the technicalities and challenges of using that. So a brief introduction about myself. Uh, uh, so I'm an international tech speaker and a, a distinguished guest lecturer, and I work at uh, OLX Group. Uh, I have done my master's in advanced computing from University of Bristol, uh, and the specialization uh, was in field of computational neuroscience and artificial intelligence. I represented India in various international hackathons, and uh, I'm a researcher also. Uh, about OLX Group, so it's a group of uh, uh, which contains of 20 plus brands, and uh, it actually has uh, around uh, 45 uh, offices spanning across five continents, and we serve across uh, five continents with 350 million people uh, per month. So the flow of the talk will be as follows. Uh, first, we'll be looking into uh, an introduction to GANs. Uh, then we'll be taking a look at uh, what style transfer is. Thereafter, we'll be learning about different neural style, tran uh, neural style transfer networks that are available uh, and are popular at this time. And then we will uh, dive into the actual NST implementation uh, by looking into loss functions, the content loss function, style loss function, total variation loss function. And then we'll be doing a kind of a code walkthrough also. Uh, the talk will be supported by a few demos also. Uh, those are actually adapted from the official TensorFlow and Keras uh, repositories. So I'll be pushing uh, the code uh, to GitHub and we'll be sharing the link to uh, it in the uh, breakout channel. Uh, and then post talk, we can have the Q and uh, question and answer session in the talks, uh, talk painting with Gans uh, channel in Discord. So yeah, prerequisites for this talk uh, that uh, you should be familiar with Python and uh, Keras, uh, especially using TensorFlow backend. And uh, an experience in artificial neural networks uh, is good to have. Uh, it's also good if you have experience with convolutional neural networks and generative adversarial networks. And you should be inquisitive to learn about deep learning. So first, let's start by revisiting the fundamentals of generative adversarial networks. In short, I'll be referring to them as GANs. So discriminative and generative models are the two types of models that we use in a GAN. So first, coming to the discriminative model, a discriminative model forms a discriminative network or the discriminator network. And it's essentially a supervised learning model which tries to classify the data which is fed into it. So uh, it is just kind of a, a classification model that we are using here. And uh, it doesn't uh, really uh, bother about uh, uh, the underlying distribution of data, only the quality of data matters to it so that it can classify into categories properly. And uh, then on the other hand, we have a generative model uh, that forms the generative network and instead of classifying the data, it's used to generate the data. It actually learns the underlying distribution of the data that's provided. And uh, then on basis of it, it tries to generate samples that are near real looking. So mostly it's uh, unsupervised learning, but uh, what if uh, we want to have some conditional training done? In that case, we may support the training set with label data also so that it becomes kind of supervised plus unsupervised learning. So conditional GANs actually use label data and uh, there uh, we have sort of supervised learning also implemented uh, a bit. And uh, then uh, the 
art of actually learning the data distribution, underlying data distribution, which the GAN actually does, is uh, uh, through uh, like implicit uh, density estimation. So we don't require to calculate any probabilities uh, externally. Everything is done uh, internally by the network itself, and it's called as implicit density estimation. So I'll be referring to these terms going forward, uh, but just to give you a gist of what GAN network, vanilla GAN actually looks like in form of a schematic diagram, it's this. So the goal is to generate near real looking samples uh, of the underlying distribution that we are provided with, that's the training set. And uh, then we have this input layer we, where we feed the random noise. This random noise forms the part of uh, latent space this can be a uh, uniform distribution, can be normal distribution. We have to pass this distribution through a uh, GAN, which is uh, like, again, formed by two uh, neural networks. One is discriminator network, one is generator network. So we'll be covering uh, on the details of uh, what's hidden inside this box uh, in the coming slides. But then once we pass this input to GANs, the GAN produces an output, uh, which is of some other dimension, say N dimension, and then that may be an image that we formed out of uh, random noise or something like that. So training of GAN algorithm uh, has two essential parts. One is training the discriminator. The second is training the generator. So training the discriminator network uh, actually involves the following flow. So we take uh, a sample, a real sample, that, that's a sample from the training set, uh, and then uh, we pass it through the discriminator uh, and we uh, have the discriminator classify it. On the other hand, we have a generator network to which random noise is fed, and then uh, that generator network actually produces a sample, which we call as X star, or X, uh, that, that's a fake sample, and that fake sample is also fed to the discriminator. Now the discriminator should be able to classify this as a fake sample. But uh, our aim is to actually have a generator improvised to the extent that discriminator starts failing in distinguishing between the real sample and the fake sample. So there will be a point where discriminator will start labeling the, will start classifying the fake sample as real sample. And there's uh, the path of generator training. So generator actually uh, uses this random noise in the second phase uh, of, of this training. This generator actually uses this random noise, generates a fake sample. The sample is fit to uh, the discriminator and the discriminator classifies that as real or fake. Uh, but the essential thing is that during this training of generator uh, phase, we back propagate the errors to generator instead of uh, back propagating it to the discriminator. So in discriminator phase, we actually have the back propagation done to discriminator network, whereas in generator phase, we have the back propagation done to the generator. And here we make sure that the uh, discriminator network's parameters are not trainable. So in the second phase, we set the trainable parameters for discriminator to false because we just want the generator to improvise. So uh, in schematic diagram, it looks like this. So this is the first phase, train the gen uh, discriminator. The second phase is training of the generator. So we have this as X, the real sample that we are providing to discriminator. And then we have this generator to which we feed some random noise from the latent space that we are calling as Z. It can be normal, it can be uniform, it can be any other distribution. Uh, it produces a sample X bar, and then uh, that's also fed to discriminator. So the discriminator classifies X and X bar as uh, in some category, maybe real or fake, and then classification error are propagated to discriminator so that discriminator learns. In the second phase, the only thing that we do is we remove this training sample phase and we just pass the X bar and then we pass the back propagated error to generator. Uh, so that's the only difference. And then we do this, we repeat the cycle in iterations so that uh, the network learns. So the discriminator uh, actually gets uh, improvised on distinguishing between real and uh, fake data. And the generator, on the other hand, improvises on uh, generating data which is near re real looking and which adheres to the underlying real uh, training data, uh, data set distribution. So these are all fake samples generated by a NVIDIA style GAN. Uh, so uh, no one can tell that these are uh, fake, uh, they look pretty much real. 
so this is uh, how much we have advanced in the last five years since the inception of uh, this concept of CANS. So next comes uh, the main uh, concept for which we are here today. We have uh, gained uh, quite a lot of uh, hold on uh, generating near real looking images or kind of photorealistic imagery. But what if we want to now generate art? Uh, instead of just generating images of static objects, uh, we want to now design new objects or build artistic uh, artifacts. So how can we do using GANs? So uh, here comes uh, the concept of style transfer. So, uh, so as I told you earlier, uh, we now have to dive into just generating new kind of artistic artifacts. So what if we have a kind of uh, image which we call as content image or base image uh, that's there of a dog. Uh, and we have a style image uh, here. I have taken an image of grass. So what if I just apply the style of this grass over to the content image and uh, say it generates this output. So that means the style of the, this image has been uh, imposed on the content image and we get some unique form of art uh, that actually contains both the content as well as the style. You see that the uh, content also is dominant here and the style also can be reflected, uh, is getting reflected in this image. So this image holds kind of a combination of both the content image and the style image. So that's our aim. Uh, we will be generating art based on similar lines. Uh, we'll be having a content image, we'll be having a style image, and our goal will be to transform or embed the style from one style image to a content image in order to produce an image which is a combination of both and looks good and realistic and original. So yeah, that's the aim of uh, uh, neural uh, style networks that uh, we'll be covering now. So you must uh, take note of uh, one thing that this uh, model that we saw, this training that happened, that didn't learn the underlying distribution. So here comes the first difference with respect to vanilla GANs. Vanilla GANs actually had the underlying distribution being learned, but here we are transferring styles. So that's the first difference. Uh, so we extract the style from the style image and then embed it to the content image. And the result should look like a blend of both the images. So why not simply interpolate the pixels? Uh, that's, that's because if we interpolate this with this, uh, what we will have is blurry image that's highly distorted and the style actually dominates uh, the content image. So it will look muddy, it will not be clear and uh, both the uh, pixels will lose their uh, entity. So this, this is the thing why, why we should not use simple interpolation for doing such sort of things. Uh, and this style transfer networks have uh, wide uh, applications in the area of gaming, in the area of uh, developing applications. Few years back, we had an app called Prisma, uh, which had this uh, sort of uh, tra style transfer made public. Uh, so people were able to apply styles from different images on their uh, selfies and all. So that, that actually saw a real boom in, in like, uh, last two, three years and people have advanced in generating uh, new ne networks that are uh, like state of the art networks and can do a uh, style transfer uh, and many more applications have come which we'll be discussing in a few uh, minutes. And uh, uh, the last one is that uh, the actual image if you see, uh, it's just that you have just applied the style on the content image. so the dimensions and all you can play with, but ultimately it looks like it looks like someone has applied some art on the content image and we got the generated image. So popular style transfer networks, if we see, uh, these are three networks. One is pix to pix uh, and one is cycle GAN. And then there's neural style transfer. We'll be covering a bit on cycle GAN and pix to pix after we cover neural style transfer, but first we'll start with neural style transfer. So neural style uh, transfer, as I told you earlier, uh, doesn't require any training set. Uh, we have seen that it doesn't require any training set. It doesn't have uh, any kind of, uh, uh, you can say, uh, back propagation being done because uh, 
we, we just have two images to deal with. We have to transfer the style of one image to another image. So there's no involvement of any kind of training set. So that's, that's another unique thing about neural style transfer that it actually picks up the features uh, from the style image and applies the features on the content image. Uh, and it creates some like hyper realistic uh, imagery. Uh, so let's say uh, we have this base image and then we apply a style image uh, uh, that's, that's shown here at the bottom we get this kind of combined image. Just playing around with the loss functions uh, and the hyperparameters, we can see uh, highly varying uh, resultant images. So uh, this is one image that we see. Uh, likewise, we can have different uh, degrees to which this image can be exploited by this neural style transfer network. And we can have different images which have the style features transferred or embedded onto the base image in different degrees. So we can generate multiple images from the same style and base image, uh, like co using combination of both. So the core of neural style transfer is that uh, essentially we have a loss function which constitutes of content loss. That's the loss uh, which I'll be telling about more in, the detail, uh, in, in a bit. So content loss, style loss, and to uh, total variance loss. So first thing is uh, that we have content loss where we would like uh, to have the combined or the resultant image to be as similar uh, as uh, to be as similar to uh, the content uh, uh, image, the base image. So that's a loss between the base image and the generated or the resultant image. Then comes the style uh, loss in where we have the generated image compared to the style uh, image. And then on the basis of how much degree of correlation is there between the uh, style of both the images, we calculate the loss. And then uh, last is the total variation loss uh, that also we call as uh, total variance loss, wherein we have the generated image uh, checked whether it's smooth or whether the pixels are distorted and blurry. Uh, so how do we minimize this loss? Ultimately, the goal of neural style transfer is to minimize the combination of these losses. So how to minimize this loss? Uh, we actually use a gradient descent technique uh, wherein we update each pixel over the iterations. And then we have something, uh, as you saw in the, previous, in the uh, previous slide, the combined image. And uh, there's a difference with the vanilla again, which I highlighted earlier also, that uh, there's no training set uh, required here, and there's no back propagation concept being applied here. So coming to content loss, uh, now onwards, I'll be making references to bits of code also, but before moving forward, I would like to show a quick demo of uh, how we can actually utilize a pre-trained network to generate these art pieces. So, uh, yeah, so this is the IPython notebook that I'm uh, using. I'll just increase the size so that you are able to see. So here we are importing libraries. Uh, uh, this is just TensorFlow library, matplotlib. We are setting the run config parameters for matplotlib, uh, then numpy, uh, Python image library, and func tools. Uh, so this is the import part. Next comes uh, a function. Uh, so this code has been adapted by uh, TensorFlow, uh, the official repository. So uh, the function is to convert a tensor to image. So this does nothing but uses some NumPy functions like uh, uh, watching on the channels that are there, the dimensions of the images that are there. And uh, then we choose the primary channel uh, if, that's, if the number of dimensions like it's greater than three dimension. Herein, we will be using four dimensional uh, tensors. So it converts the image, uh, the tensor to image. Uh, then uh, that's just a function which is being utilized uh, below. Uh, we have the content path. Uh, content path uses the utils function of Keras. Uh, uh, so get file actually gets a file from remote place and then uh, fetches uh, the file. So we are using uh, image of uh, the dog which I showed earlier. And then for demo purposes, I have uh, taken three images, which I'll be running through uh, uh, in a bit. Uh, so these are the images of style that we want to transfer. So this is a content image. This is the style image. 
Uh, then we have load image function just to display the images. Uh, this again uses the normal NumPy and uh, TensorFlow functions and libraries. We read the image, we decode the image, we convert the image and scale the image. So it's kind of processing of image and then showing the newly formed image. So we resize the image afterwards and then we return the image. And I am show function, this is a typical function. We just are uh, attaching title to the image. Uh, and then we have the plot function. So till this point, I'll run each of the cells so that uh, you observe what is happening. So first we will see uh, image, uh, the style image of bushes being applied to uh, a dog. So last time in the slide I showed grass being applied to dog. Now we'll see bushes being applied to dog. Uh, so yeah. Let me print the images that we are uh, taking into account for this. So this is the image of bushes and we are applying it to dog. And then uh, we'll have uh, the pre-trained model VGG19. Uh, so I'm taking a VGG19 pre-trained model, which has all the weights set. And it is able to classify uh, into thousand categories, uh, the network has been trained on uh, one million uh, uh, images taken from ImageNet data set. So you see that the combined image is uh, having the style of the grass and uh, also adhering to the content image has the content of the actual base image that we passed. So nothing much I have done here. I have just used VGG19 pre-trained model. And uh, this is the destination to that model. Uh, we have passed uh, it to the uh, we have passed to it the content image along with style image and then we have passed to tensor to image thing which takes out uh, and processes the image and then displays it now let's quickly uh, jump on and then i'll uncomment this uh, and we'll have some other style transferred to this image uh, we can directly go so i'll show uh, What's the style image we are referring to now? So, uh, okay. Uh, let me change the name here. Mm. So it actually took from cache. That's a style image that we are uh, trying to apply on the content image. And then I'll quickly apply this to uh, the base image and we should have a result like this. This looks like a novel art piece. So that's for the demo of the first part. Uh, now moving back to content loss. So content loss is actually uh, kind of uh, L2 difference or the like mean squared error between the content image and the generated image. So what if we compare apples to apples? The content is similar. So the information of the pixels should also be similar to some degree and we will have less content loss. But what if uh, uh, we compare ocean or sharks or say oranges with apple or banana with apple, then there will be higher degree of content loss. But we will not do pixel by pixel comparison. What we will do is we will have the higher level features uh, compared. So how to compare the higher, higher level features? While training a neural network, say we pick up convolutional neural networks and there are blocks or there are stages at which we train the neural network. And uh, as and when uh, there's uh, any stage uh, which progresses to the next stage, some of the features uh, gets dropped, the lower level features gets dropped and we just are left with higher level features. So at each layer of neural network, say convolutional neural network, the lower layers represent some minute details, say uh, very, very minute details and the higher layers or the layers at the top, uh, they actually contain the higher level features or just say broad features like this is a car, this is a building. So just to capture the higher level features, we'll be dealing with the top layers of the neural network from a pre-trained model. And in our case, it's a VGG19. Uh, so it is a 19 layered uh, CNN architecture. And as I told you, it's capable of classifying images into thousand categories and has been trained over 1 million images from the ImageNet dataset. 
So the VGG net uh, architecture looks something like this. Uh, we have an input layer and then we have uh, five chunks. So one, two, three, four, five, these are five blocks. Each block has a bunch of layers. So con one, con two, you can see likewise, we have con five, con one, two, con five, four. And then we have a dense layer which flattens the input which is being fed and then classification happens. So we'll be using this VGG19 net and then uh, using the higher layers from block five, we'll be capturing the higher level features or the content uh, or, or the features through which we'll be actually uh, collecting and uh, uh, computing the content loss. So this is the code. Uh, I'll just uh, zoom in if that's possible. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, we have uh, this uh, Keras uh, library being used. VGG19 is the, uh, is, is the model that we are using, the pre-trained model that we are using. And uh, we just specify the path to base image. We specify the path to uh, style image. And then uh, we just specify some weights. So content weight is the total uh, loss, total variation loss weight is there, style weight is there, but that we'll be looking out in uh, a bit uh, later stage. So base image, uh, we have the base image style uh, image uh, being processed by the path uh, from the path which we have provided. And then we have a placeholder, uh, you can say uh, placeholder, uh, image created uh, that wherein the combinated uh, the the combined image will go so we are having these three images uh, we pass these three images by contact concatenating them uh, in form of a tensor and then we pass them in vgg19 which has the pre-trained uh, uh, weights and then we get some resultant image uh, from that image we actually uh, take, uh, uh, we, we actually take from the pre-trained model, the uh, third, uh, you can say layer of block five. So if you see third layer of block five, uh, we take the, uh, we take this as a reference for uh, calculating the uh, loss because higher level features are captured here. So we may take uh, two second layer, we may take third layer, we may take fourth layer, but it totally depends. Uh, on you, uh, like taking different layers may result in varying results. So I have chosen three as a layer. Uh, you may cho choose two also. So we choose two and then we pass uh, the base image uh, tr and we collect the uh, output from this third layer. And uh, we also have the combination features from the combined image taken from third layer uh, in the network. And then we just uh, have the L2 norm applied, that's mean squared error uh, applied to both the images. So uh, generator image and content image. And then we uh, just have the uh, content loss calculated by uh, multiplying it with the weight, the content weight that we specified here at the top. Uh, coming to style loss, uh, that's the second type of uh, loss that we wanted to cover. Uh, so coming back to style loss, uh, we have images uh, which are uh, like uh, similar to each other, maybe. Uh, so those images, we call them as correlated images, but there are images which are different and have different styles or different lower level details that doesn't have uh, like common lower level details. Uh, so those uh, images are uh, considered as having uh, less degree of correlation. So how to co uh, calculate correlation between the layers. So degree of correlation between uh, two images can be, uh, uh, can, can be computed by uh, calculating the degree of correlation between the feature maps. So as we want to capture lower level features because lower level features represent the style, just, just note that higher level features represent content and lower level features or the output from the lower level layers of the neural network represent the style. So we cons we take into consideration the lower level layers of uh, uh, convolutional neural networks. We fetch the feature maps from there. We flatten the feature maps. We take the dot product uh, of the feature maps between the two images. And then depending on that dot product, if the value of a dot product is greater uh, than some say value that we have specified, we consider it to have higher degree of correlation. That means the style of both the images matches. So suppose this is image of grass, image A is image of grass and image B is also image of grass. 
so you see that uh, the orange points the uh, the the dark orange points that you see uh, on both the images uh, if they overlap so that's the area where the image uh, has uh, like uh, similar kind of or uh, correlated style so we can say that these images are correlated to some extent and in case if this consider this block b to be fully orange then we will say that that has a higher degree of correlation that combination has a higher degree of correlation so in our case uh, when we will be calculating style loss image a will be style image and image b will be the combined image the resultant image that we get after training so uh, in order to actually have the style loss uh, calculated for uh, different layers uh, of our network what we consider uh, is is a thing called gram matrix so gram matrix is dot product of all the feature maps against the feature maps so uh, suppose you have layer uh, so you have this layer so if you take a dot product of a with a then we you take dot product of a with b so in this image it should be clear we have image a and we have image b image c all these images are of grasses but one contains uh, only grass one contains bushes also one contains some brown grass uh, what we have is that uh, we have uh, the gram matrix which you see on the right uh, calculated so we have feature one map to feature one and then we calculate the correlation between them by taking dot product of the feature maps then we take dot product of feature one with feature two of image a that means this one uh, and this one uh the dot product of both will be taken and uh, the common area or the uh, result of the dot product will be shown by some uh, color likewise we do for uh, do for all the features uh, of a layer uh, uh for a, for an image so suppose this is image 1 we have first the dot product taken across all the feature maps against the feature maps of that image and then we have this gram matrix likewise we generate gram matrix for image b and image c and then uh, if the gram matrix of two images uh, in our case it will be the style image and it will be the uh, resultant generated image so when the gram matrix of both the images uh, are highly comparable we say that the style actually uh, holded throughout the training so the style was actually transferred to the generated image so in that case we, uh, we will consider it as success so we have to uh, Uh, calculate the uh, mean squared error again and that's the l2 norm error and uh, uh, we have to minimize that error so coming to the code we again uh, say that style loss uh, is uh, zero initially we have the definition for gram matrix function here uh, this function actually uh, does it flattens as i showed you it flattens the feature map and then takes a dot product of it uh, against itself and uh, then returns a gram matrix so feature map dot product is taken and we get the gram matrix cell likewise we do for all the feature maps and we get the whole gram matrix uh, then we have this function of style loss where we uh, calculate the mean square error between uh, gram matrix of combined image and style image so this is nothing but uh, the mean squared error of uh, the gram uh, the the com the combined image and the style image uh, and these are just like uh, some parameters to uh, have uh, that that we are passing for the uh, function to the loss function uh, this feature layer actually shows the active layers that we chose so we chose block uh, block 1 so we will be calculating uh, uh, loss uh, against all the layers present in block 1 so block 1 of image uh, is uh this this block 1 so uh, suppose we have five layers uh, in image we will be taking that uh okay so we took block 1 block 2 block 3 block 4 block 5 so we have taken each layer of uh, all the five blocks so con 1 1 con 2 1 con 3 1 con 4 1 con 5 1 so each of the uh, lower level layers from each block have been considered in order to have this style loss calculated and then uh, then we just pass this and extract the feature uh, uh, maps from these layers and then we pass it to uh, the style loss function that we have written 
then comes the total variation loss a total variation loss is nothing but uh, the loss uh, or or uh, loss with respect to the quality of the resultant image that we are observing so in case if the combined image is distorted and is uh, is pixelated uh, we will consider it as noisy and the loss will be very high so what we can do is we can take combined image and then we will shift pixels of that combined image each pixel uh, to the right once and also we will do another step we will take each pixel of the uh, generated image and then shift it towards down by one pixel we'll have both of these results stored in a and b respectively and then we will just take uh, a sum of uh, these two and we will uh, uh, calculate the error so we will calculate the error uh, uh, by shifting the pixels to right and uh, downward so that will show us whether that uh, image is highly distorted or not so that's for total variation loss once we have these three losses we will uh, just combine all these three and then we will get the resultant loss then is the time to start the training of model so then comes the training phase uh, so we have computed the loss till now we have computed gram uh, we have computed gram matrix based on which we have computed style loss uh, we have computed the content loss by taking into consideration the content image as well as the generated image and we have calculated the to total variation loss so this loss can be trained uh so uh, this this network can be trained by taking into account loss and uh, we need to minimize this loss so we'll be using an optimization technique here so essentially neural style transfer is a is an optimization technique which uh which uh, depends on another quasi newton uh, numerical optimization technique called uh, bfgs and ls for uh like a limited memory use or we can actually constrain it on basis of resources so l is limited memory bfgs algorithm which is a numerical optimization algorithm and what it does is it finds the local minimum of any objective function based on the gradient of that objective function so essentially what we need to do is we need to minimize this computed loss over uh, iterations uh by using the gradient descent method and what we'll be doing is we'll be updating a uh, value of each pixel uh, by an amount which is proportional to the negative of the gradient that comes from this loss function so let's uh, dive into the code uh, here okay so it's pretty much uh, same uh, as i showed you in the snippets so we have the base image uh, we have the style uh, Uh, reference image paths and uh, we have the weights defined here so total variation weight we have defined style weight we have defined and content weight we have defined we process the images and we specify the dimensions of the generated image that we want to have and we specify the iterations so uh, for this demo i have considered 50 iterations only but uh, in real uh, scenario you will be using somewhat like 5000 iterations or 4000 iterations to actually see the result that i showed you in the slides so let me go back to the slide once and show you the end result that uh, we'll see so this is the end result that we should see and this is after 4000 iterations of training uh we have the pre process image uh, pre processing of the images uh, done so it actually uh, just opens resizes applies uh, the image uh, processing functions and then uh, we get the tensor uh, basically out of it Uh, we have this deprocess image also so it converts an image uh, it's uh, it converts a tensor to the image so nothing much is being done here again a reshape function is uh, being used uh, then we are clipping the numpy array for any additional you can say overflow that's happening and then uh, we but just pass the base image and style image to the preprocess uh, function that we have created and we get the tensor representation of the two images once we get the tensor uh, uh, A representation of the two images we have all the three images combined image that we are treating as a placeholder image as of now the style image which is a preprocessed image and the base image which is a preprocessed image so these three are good to be fed into uh, uh, a tensor concatenated network uh, which will be feeding the same to the vgg19 network for training so we'll be combining these three and then uh, concatenating and then feeding into the vgg19 pre trained network which we imported at the top and uh, then uh, we'll have the model loaded with us and uh, also uh, we'll have the uh, key layers uh, that that uh, we want to actually uh, match against uh, 
taken into form of a dictionary here. So output bit represents the same. So now is the time to uh, compute the neural style uh, loss uh, that we talked about earlier. Again, this is the same uh, similar function which I showed you earlier. This is a bit modified from the actual one that I showed you in the slide. That's a gram matrix function which I have already explained. So uh, it calculates a gram, gram matrix for the uh, fed tensor. Uh, then style loss is there. In style loss, we have the combined and uh, combined image and style loss uh, gram matrix generated, uh, style image gram matrix uh, generated, and then we calculate the L2 uh, error. And then uh, we have uh, the content loss, which is just simply the uh, MSE, that's mean squared error between the generated and base image. And the total variation, as I told you, that we'll be shifting by one pixel and then shifting uh, to, towards, uh, downward, uh, towards the downward direction uh, by one pixel. So that's, again, the sum of both. And then we uh, just calculate the uh, error. And uh, then we select the uh all 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 of these three uh, uh losses and we uh, add them to form the main loss and uh, the thing which you should be seeing uh is this the next thing that you should be seeing is this that uh, we have the gradient computed for this particular loss and uh, we fed uh, we feed it uh, to the evaluator you can say uh, class that we have created so evaluator class Evaluator class actually uh, returns the loss and the gradient value at each stage. And we have the iterations formed. So uh, my network is training, as you can see. Uh, over, say, 4,000 iterations, what we do is uh, we take this loss, uh, we pass it to the evaluator class, uh, we get the loss and gradients, and then we update the value of each pixel uh, by, by the negative of this gradient thing. And ultimately, what we see is uh, this combined image. So that's all for this talk. Uh, I'll be posting the links to uh, uh, all these code things. So next we have pix to pix just I'll be talking a bit about it. Uh, so it's used for image to image translation. So you can have say a uh, handout uh, or say a schematic diagram being transferred or translated into an image which looks real kind of a chipboard uh, representation being uh, translated to an actual building or silhouettes being transferred or uh, translated into images, Google map street view being transferred to map view, uh, likewise. And then we have cycle GANs, which is again uh, uh, an advanced GAN for neural uh, style transfer. So here we have uh, essentially two uh, GANs. One is uh, training for the first input and one is training for the other input, but both are actually dependent cyclically on each other. So that's another application, but uh, discussing this is uh, out of the scope of this talk since, since we restricted it to neural style transfer. So this is something which I'm pointing you towards that you can actually explore cycle again also if you are uh, more inclined towards scans. So these three are the popular, uh, uh, you can say networks uh, out there to have just in, uh, the stylistic artifacts created and link to each one of them and wherever I use resources, I use the code references from uh, David Foster's uh, generative deep learning and uh, Jacob uh, Jacob's uh, GANs in action. So these are the two uh, reference books that I uh, consulted. So that concludes my talk. Uh, we are also hiring at OLX Group. So feel free to reach out to me or just uh, drop in uh, at the career section and then feel free to apply for the roles. And uh, yeah, don't forget to follow me on uh, Twitter, LinkedIn. We, we can get connected and we can have uh, uh, your questions answered in the Discord too. And then later on, we can get connected on these platforms. So thanks a lot for listening.